Uh, my name is Aydan Özcan, and um, I'm an associate professor at UCLA School of Engineering and at uh, California Nanosystems Systems Institute. So now you are visiting my lab, where um, roughly uh, around 20 uh, students and postdocs uh, work uh, to create new microscopy and imaging tools specifically for telemedicine and uh, global health applications. So this group is focusing on lens-free computational microscopy so that you can create extremely compact, cost-effective and lightweight microscopes that could fit in um, at, at the back of, for instance, a cell phone or be attached to the cell phone so that you can enjoy some advanced technologies um, that can look at uh, specimen like blood or other bodily fluids or water in remote locations. And the enabling technology behind this is actually um, uh, digital inline holography. Holography has been a, a field where it's um, got s you know, significant attention, especially over the last decade or so, specifically with um, the introduction of new algorithms as well as new digital components, better sensors, better algorithms, and better processors. Uh, faster processors make uh, digital holography especially uh, valuable for today's applications and problems. So we are also um, realizing that and trying to use some of these holographic imaging principles to create on-chip imagers where the specimen essentially is placed very close to a, a digital sensor, right, like a CCD or a CMOS. So we started with uh, seeking solutions to basic cytometer needs in, for instance, uh, in an African village toward, for instance, monitoring of an HIV positive patient. That's when we started to realize the power of today's uh, sensors and today's algorithms in terms of replacing some of these bulky uh, optical components. And when we started, we didn't start with the idea of using specifically holography for these purposes. We were just trying to, from scratch, look at the fundamental problems that are, base, uh, that are faced in these uh, remote locations, resource poor countries, and then provide solutions. During this journey, we, we realized that there are a lot of opportunities indeed to bring uh, better solutions by simplifying the optics and uh, kind of um, improving the performance uh, and creating a platform that makes up for the lack of complexity of these optical components through computation. Lens-free computational microscopy in general uh, could really impact uh, resource poor countries for telemedicine applications because um, relying on the cell phone network as well as the components and the software and the hardware installed on the cell phone is a great uh, means to achieve some advanced microanalysis in field conditions. We have today uh, more than 5 billion cell phone subscribers and close to 70 percent of those cell phones are actually being used in developing countries. So the resource that we have with this connectivity with this platform is enormous and utilizing that and, uh, and uh, building components around that is really a major theme in my group where we're trying to bring in more advanced uh, tools using the cell phones or the components that are installed on the cell phone to uh, extremely re remote locations, resource poor countries. So what you're looking at here um, uh, in my hands are two different uh, lens-free microscopes. Uh, essentially this one is a USB powered lens-free microscope um, it is on the order of 40 to 50 grams uh, in weight and a very inexpensive. Uh, there is a light emitting diode at the top and this unit um, essentially is adjusted with a pinhole size of on the order of 0.1 millimeters that is butt coupled to the light emitting diode and this distance is a couple of centimeters. And this geometry essentially looks simple but it enables us to tune the um, temporal and spatial coherence properties of light that is hitting the cells. The cells are loaded from the site using this tray and there is a CMOS sensor um, that records the holographic diffraction patterns of these cells loaded and they are eliminated by this uh, spatially um, um, partially coherent light. And then of course these holograms are processed. So this is a very cost-effective and lightweight and compact architecture that could conduct microscopy with uh, a resolution on the order of 1.5 micrometers uh, and over a very large field of view on the order of 24 millimeters square. Similarly, um, utilizing the, the hardware and the software on the cell phone is also providing us new opportunities to, for instance, conduct fluorescent microscopy on the cell phone. This is actually an attachment to the cell phone which is on the order of a matchbox in size around 30 grams in weight and very inexpensive because this attachment converts the 
the cell phone camera into a fluorescent microscope that is an extremely wide field of view device. So in this case, we have some light emitting diodes put together, very inexpensive components indeed, powered the, through a battery. And this is where you load your specimen. And once, once it goes um, in, the specimen actually acts like a multimode waveguide. It's like a planar multimode waveguide where this excitation light, which you see as the blue color, is guided within your microfluidic device or within your specimen, which might contain, for instance, blood or urine or whatever liquid that you would like to image. And then it's exciting these fluorescent labeled cells or parasites, which are then imaged using the camera phone's uh, CMOS sensor, which is at the back. What I'm thinking is that we are in, in a great um, uh, time right now in terms of the cost effectiveness of these microscopes m will increase the number of users of personal microscopes dramatically by several orders of magnitude potentially. And that will open up enormous opportunities for things that we don't yet even understand or Im can imagine. So that's an area where I'm very excited about. So that looking at this not as a single microscope that's cost effective, but as a component that could lead to much larger things globally.